Eden, welcome back to the podcast. So happy to be back and have another riveting discussion. So a lot of people are always worried about where they are in life, you know. Am I going down the right path? Am I where I'm supposed to be? Because it's it's we often compare ourselves to other people. We might be 20 years old and then look at someone else's 20 and be like, oh, they seem to have more money than me or this than me, whatever. But I, I think it's it's so important to realize that, you know, something that you preach as well is you are where you're supposed to be in life. Yeah. Yeah. I think that where we are is where we are meant to be because if you weren't where you are right now, you wouldn't learn the lessons that you were supposed to learn, meet the people that you were supposed to learn, have the experiences that you were supposed to have in order to help you in the next phase of your life. And like you said, it's so easy to get wrapped up in comparison in comparing ourselves to other people who are around the same age as us being like, well, they're doing all of these things so differently. But I think that we need to remind ourselves we all have our own unique paths and we all have our own unique journey. And just because someone's path for them looks one specific way means nothing about you and your path. Your path is completely different than theirs. And I don't think that it's ever that we're behind in life, which I think that when we think of comparison, we think of, I'm so behind, I have to catch up all of these things. Divine timing is never wrong. And I live by the mantra, what's meant for you will never pass you by. Even if you miss an opportunity, say you were meant to miss that opportunity. It was meant to fall apart at that time. I have so many examples in my life that things fell apart at the time for them to come together at a better time because I wasn't ready at that moment. And being able to look at it in that way that it's like, okay, if this isn't working out right now, maybe it's not meant for me at all, or maybe it's just not meant for me in this moment. You know, something that I've, I've thought about before, not too deep, but that's been a broad topic is, you know, the concept of meeting someone who's right for you, just not at the right time. Mm -hmm. Is that something you've had experiences with? Yes. Oh my God. Yes. I have had experiences with that. And I think that I have contradictory beliefs with it because I kind of go back and forth between like, if it's the right person, it's never the wrong time. And then like, but also just your paths not aligning at that time because we, like I have had, I had experience years ago in my life with someone that like we came into each other's lives and like we, the synchronicities were like so weird and it was going so well. And then we just like went our separate ways through no bad blood, no nothing. We both just had like different paths that we were on. And then we ended up like coming back together at a different time and like things worked out really well. And I think that that had to happen because if we have forced it at the time, it wouldn't have been granted. We aren't in each other's lives anymore, but like we have no bad blood with each other. We have no nothing. And that person was meant to be in my life. And if someone is meant for you the same way as if some something is meant for you, it'll never pass you by. So even if it doesn't work out in the moment, it could work out later on down the road. You never know because like you're the journey that you are on is completely different than the journey that I am on. It's a completely different journey than so-and-so is on. And the alignment of those journeys could just not be at this moment. And that's hard for a lot of people to understand when they like someone or they want something to work so well. They try to force it because they want it to be the right time. But just because we want something doesn't mean that it, we can have it. Yeah. And, so, you know, something I think about is, you know, something that I've always thought is I don't really believe in if you're in a relationship with someone and you guys go your separate ways and you both absolutely hate each other. Yeah. To that extent, I think to myself, if you guys end the relationship and dislike each other that much, it probably shouldn't have been in the first place. I agree. Which, I agree. and it's like, because it's like, you know, if you genuinely like care about because the, the, there's the whole there's the whole thing about you know everyone's everyone's thrown away around the world the the phrase i love you and you know i care about you and this and that but if you guys really cared about each other not in because i think there's a difference not, not, or in certain situations it's you don't you may think you care about someone in a relationship but you really only care about them because of what they're giving you and then there's a difference between that and being in a relationship with someone or actually caring about someone and actually wanting the best for them because you can go
go your separate ways and, you know, appreciate that you guys were in each other's lives and realize that it might be unfortunate that you're not in each other's lives anymore, but you can still hope for the best for that person and not look at your ex-girlfriend or ex-boyfriend and be like, oh, I hope this happens to them. This I don't think it should ever be like that. No, I completely agree with you. And I think that when people look at it that way, it's coming from a very immature place and a very hurtful place that's full of anger. Like I look at every single relationship that I've had in my life, whether it is a friendship, a significant other, whatever it is. And if I had love for you at one point, if I cared about you at one point, regardless of whatever bad blood we had, whatever things we had, I will always love you and I will always be rooting for you, even if you aren't in my life anymore. It might not be healthy for me to be in your life anymore. It might be healthy for you to be in my life anymore, but I always want you to win. I will always have love for you and I will always be wanting you to be happy no matter what. I don't care. And I have had people in my life that have done me so dirty. And that is something that I pride myself in. And like anyone in my life says the same thing that no matter how dirty anyone does me, I will always love that person. I will always want the best for them. And that's something that I'm very grateful that I have in myself. Right. Yeah. I, I, I feel that too, because I think there also comes um, a point where, you know, this doesn't happen for everyone, but you can look at the past situations in your life, the past relationships with significant others and just friendships of even if really bad things happen, you can like in a sense forgive them for that and not, not so uh, the, the, the thing that I think about in terms of how do I know if I truly forgave this person? If you think back about the time that did you wrong or whatever it was, and when you think about it, you're filled with anger, sadness, whatever the emotion is, you're not over it. If you no. can look back at it and think about it and acknowledge it, but not really at, at a point, it really angered you, but now you don't really feel anything. That's how you know that you forgave them, that you're over it or over them. Yes. I a hundred percent agree with what you just said, because when we hold on to anger, the only person that we're doing a disservice for is ourselves. And the hardest apologies that we will ever accept are the ones that we never receive. And a lot of former friendships or former relationships People think that closure from the other person is the key. And I don't believe in finding closure in someone else. I only have ever believed in finding closure within myself. Because if I go to someone in my past who did me dirty and I'm like, I want closure. I want you to explain to me why you did all of these things and we need to talk and we need to get to the bottom line. It's not going to fix anything because them explaining to me why they did what they did isn't going to help me heal because they aren't responsible for that healing. I am. I am responsible for my own closure. No one else is. I think that the idea of finding closure in someone else is complete and utter bullshit. And that the only time that you go to find closure in someone else is because you want things to work out again. And you have the idea and the hope that, oh, if I get closure with this person, it's going to rekindle something with us and it's going to open that back up. Yeah, I remember in my first relationship, um, after it ended, um, there wasn't there was a reason as to why it ended, but it, I didn't I didn't believe that was like the the sole reason as to why things ended. So I would always think to myself like, oh, like I really want to figure out why exactly things worked out the way they did. Like, why was there something else I did? Was it yeah. whatever? Right? Because you wonder about it. Um, and I I've had a um, habit of always blaming myself for things like that, even if it wasn't completely my fault. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think it's like you just said, it's it's really important to just realize that you don't always need that from someone else because sometimes you're not going to get it. And if you don't get it, you can't go the rest of your life always wondering because how is that going to serve you? Yep. And I think too, reminding ourselves that having that feeling of wanting to understand makes us human. It's normal to be like, I want to understand why this happened. I want to know why this happened. That's... That, that's what makes us what we that who we are that what makes us living breathing beings but it's not always our place to understand it right in that moment because some things just happen the way that they do to prepare us for something down the road and then something could click 15 years later and be like that had to happen that way because it makes sense now and when you fight for the closure with someone else it could just hurt you more in the long run because it's prolonging the healing process and it's prolonging the grieving process. And I think that that is something too, that relationships we don't give ourselves enough time to do and that isn't talked about enough is grieving the life that you could have had with someone 
Because when we have a relationship and we're in a relationship with a significant other, you are either going to spend the rest of your life with this person or you're going to break up. Those are the only two options. And when we are in the good of it, we it's hard not to idealize this life with them and picture this life that we have with them. And then when you break up, that life completely goes away. And so the idea that you had of the life that you would be, have with this person, the person that you would be with this person is now completely taken from you. And that is a loss in itself that we don't, we don't just grieve like the death of a loved one. We grieve multiple things in our lives. And a breakup is just that. It's a grieving process because you're losing not only someone that you deeply care about, you're losing the life that you could have had with that person. And I don't think that that is something that is talked about enough when talking about loss of friends or significant others that are still alive. Yeah. I 100% agree with you. And something else I think about is, especially nowadays, you know, it's people don't take that time to heal themselves and heal the emotional um, part of everything. And they just, we just go out and, you know, try and find someone else. You know, the thing that's very common nowadays is getting a rebound. You know, I've, I've, I've talked to girls that I know and she's like, oh, yeah, like I dated him. I dated him just for a reason. Like, imagine being on the other side of that. Like, I, I, I can't even imagine how I would feel if I, I, I spent like six months with someone and then at the end they, they tell me or I just figure out they were only with me to get back at their ex. And it's like, yeah, what the fuck did I just, it, it's, it's, yeah, exactly. Absolutely horrible. And it's like, I think a lot of things too, especially with like, because I'm like on the cusp of like millennial and Gen Z, you're a Gen Z, is a roster. And when you're in a relationship, you put your roster to the side because I have friends that have done this. I social media talks about it all the time. And then, but you keep that roster in case anything happens so that you have people to fall back on. And I'm like, how does that make sense? Because at that point, you're not fully in the relationship. You're not fully committed to this person. And it's like, how are you just going to jump from one relationship to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next? And never be alone, never work on yourself because you're taking something with you from every single one of those relationships and who you were before those relationships. And you're not giving yourself time to cope with anything or process anything. Right. So after each relationship that you end or the other person ends, you're, you have, you know, emotional things you're dealing with, all other things that are going on in your mind. And you're taking all of that, all the issues with that, and you're taking it to the next relationship, get, getting more baggage, taking to the next one. And just, it's an endless cycle. Yes. It's, don't get me wrong. We will never not take baggage into any relationship that we go into. We all have baggage, but we are control. We are in control of what baggage we take in because what you process and work on prior to going into a relationship, is it going to come up in the relationship? Yeah, more likely it will, but you're going to have better coping mechanisms on how to deal with it and better communication on how to deal with it as opposed to jumping from one relationship to the next and never dealing with anything. And then you're in a shit storm of not only your issues, but the other person's issues as well. And then whoever the person is that like, I kind of view it as like almost like an innocent bystander that like, if you're the person that's jumping from one relationship to the next, the person, the people that you're jumping to are like innocent bystanders, not that they're completely innocent or whatever, but you're jumping into someone's life and they have no idea what they're getting into because they don't know where you're coming from with it all. Yeah. And I mean, having said all that, you know, taking that time to work on yourself is what I always tell people and what I tell myself is the most important thing because, you know, how it, it's because I've even dealt with it where I've, I've tried to like, I haven't been fully um, healed or moved on from someone in the past. And then I try something with someone else and like that person still comes up in my mind because it's like I haven't gotten over them. So like you have to take the time to be able to release and let go of them because if you don't you're like you the point you made before you're never going to be fully in that relationship that you're in now no for sure absolutely being able to take responsibility for ourselves our own actions our own healing and don't get me wrong about this either healing is linear it is never fully done when you decide to go on a healing journey you are on that journey for the rest of your life you're never going to wake up one day and be like i am fully healed and i am perfect and i can what a no we're all going to be healing and growing and learning the rest of our lives but we being able to work on certain things 
so that we don't bring certain aspects of us that we're not, that we don't love that much or we're not that proud of into future relationships helps sets the foundation for that relationship to be healthier. Because if you're not choosing to prioritize healthy communication in a relationship, healthy boundaries in a relationship, like healthy processing in a relationship, which is all things you really have to do on your own first before you can do it with someone else, then how is that relationship supposed to withstand anything? Yeah, you're just, it's it's going to be a stuck. You're going to be in a rut and that you're not going to, you're just not going to be able to get out of. Absolutely. Something that I saw about on your page when you're talking about relationships is I, I feel like this isn't really talked about that much is mental attraction because you can, you have, like, I, I, I know ex- when I heard that, you know, I know experiences in my life where, you know, a, a girl might not seem physically look like she's a 10 out of 10, mm-hmm. but it doesn't matter because the way, the way she talks, the way she thinks and how it relates to me, like, mm-hmm. well, let's, I mean, I, I don't mean to put it in numbers, but let's say a six, she's a six out of 10. Her having that mental attraction, having being able to relate to me and have all the things I want, that, that, that'll bring her up to a 10. Oh, yeah, for sure. I think that mental attraction, and I've noticed this more with men, no offense than anyone, that when I say this on social media platforms, men jump down my throat and are like, you're just saying that. Women are just saying that and women only care about looks. You could line up. And you can ask anyone in my life to attest to this too. You can line up any guy I have ever dated or talked to. There is nothing in common with any of them on how they look at all because it is all about mental attraction for me. If I can vibe with you and like connect with you on a level and have conversations with you that I feel seen in, that I feel heard in, that I feel like you understand me, I don't care what you look like because at that point, mentally I'm like we connect and that's all that matters to me because physical attraction is only going to get you so far like if you're choosing to have a relationship with someone solely based on their physicality it's not going to be a help it's not going to withstand anything because you attraction can grow for someone as you get to know them and all of those things but like being on the same mental plane as someone that's hard you can't like learn that. You can't like grow to have that. Like, I think that within, and also I think that within the first couple of like dates with or hanging out with someone or talking to someone, you catch that vibe within the first couple of times that it's like, I fuck with you on a mental level. Because when you, it's hard to find people that you just connect with now that can understand you, your perspective, your beliefs, your where you're going in your life. And you have to have, those factors matter so much more than when someone looks like, you think at 80, we're all going to be, having six packs and super attractive. No, we're going to be wrinkly and old and gray. And you know what? Being able to have a cool ass conversation with the 80 year old next to me matters so much more than what he looks like when he was 30, you know? Yeah. And, and it, it's, it, it, it brings things to another level. Cause like you said, just physicality will never get you far. It, it, it's, it's, and when I, if I'm like, trying to date someone or talk to someone that isn't on like the same either a higher or similar mental level than me it's mm-hmm. it's it's very difficult because i feel disconnected yeah because it's like i'm trying i'm 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 trying to kind of get something out of this person that may not they just may not be in them and i mean I, that's just something that i have to like i have to learn to just come to terms with yes if you if talking to you doesn't make me like want to learn more, grow more, like develop more, it doesn't pique my curiosity, my interests, like then how is it going to work? Because I think the whole point of a relationship is being able to come together as like two separate people that come together, that live their lives, that are choosing to live their lives together, but are choosing to help each other be the best versions of themselves, helping them heal, helping them grow, helping them love themselves, helping them see themselves in a better light, sharing similar interests, similar beliefs. And even if the person's beliefs aren't the exact same as mine, like I'm very spiritual, but say that they're, they believe in something different than me, but they still believe in a higher power. Like we still have that connection, even if it isn't the exact same as me. So like you're being able to help me not only grow and question myself and learn more like i'm helping you see things from a different perspective and you're helping me see things from a different perspective 
you know, that's also something that I've had to mm, like think about in my own life and from friends that I've talked to because, you know, I got a friend and he's he's always he's talked to so many different girls, but he's he's always he's looking for and in a sense sometimes I am too, he's looking for the perfect girl who matches you exactly on the mental level, exactly the physical features, blonde hair, this and that, whatever. And it's mm-hmm. like like reality isn't create your own character. It's like it's it like right and and you can like you can like you just said you can vibe with someone who might not be on the exact same uh, i don't want to say level because it's not really a level it's just yeah. uh you know you know what i'm trying to say the way yeah. you think um it could be like you're here and they're here but not in like a level sense it's just different mm-hmm. um but you guys can still like really relate to each other mm-hmm. but then there's also where you know you could be here and so or you could be here and someone else is just off the fucking playing field and you're trying to work things out and it, it just inevitably won't work yes yes and like we're saying that and i think that when people when it comes to physicality a lot of people try to force that because they'll see someone that they think is so hot so attractive and they're like i'm gonna force this connection with us even though they have literally nothing in common like i have gone on dates with guys who don't get me wrong physically very very attractive mentally i'm like sitting there and i'm like this is awful this is horrible we have nothing in common like and that's that's fine i'm not going to force it like you tried it wasn't there and that's that but a lot of people will try it under see that there's they have nothing in common but but they're so hot okay that's great but like if you can't have like an actual intelligent conversation with this person or you can't connect with them what's the point because what are you going to talk about at that point like it's like forced conversation and that's just uncomfortable if you ask me yeah it's just you, you're going to be forced to talk about things all the time that you, you just don't want to talk about just so you can be with this person that you find very attractive and that's just mm-hmm. it you know in in the short term you know that could be enjoyable for some people but in, in, in any sort of long term it's 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 going on the fucking train tracks and getting fucking run over 10 times yep yep there's um i, I forget who said this this was like some celebrity like a really long time ago um that tweeted it's not her looks that are going to raise your child it's who she is as a person and the exact same thing can be said for a man if in like it doesn't even have to go with like raising your child whatever but like it's not the person's looks that are gonna help you grow together and help you learn to love together and all those things it's their, their integrity and who they are inside and if they don't have that it's not it's pointless you're wasting your time right and then that that's it's just something that I think most of us aren't willing to acknowledge because people will still, I mean, I'm sure there's tons of guys and tons of girls that are just continuing to go out with this pe- these people just because they find them attractive, even though there, there's no, there's no mental connection whatsoever. Yeah. But, but I mean, you know, that's, that, that just goes along to like being a slave to your, like your biological mind. Yes. The ego, the ego is very powerful. And be when the ego is in control, that's hard. When the ego runs the show, that is hard because then that's the only thing that matters is how others perceive you or the perception that you have of others. Because sometimes I think people are scared to be with the people that they really want to be with because, oh, if I post this person on social media, I'm going to be judged because they don't look a certain way. Who gives a fuck? If you like them and you connect with them and you vibe with them and you like them, who cares if anyone else what anyone else thinks? Exactly. There, there, there's been there's been multiple times in my life where a friend or two um, commented on like a girl I was with and they're like, oh, I don't really find them that attractive. I was like, cool. I, I don't really care. Like I I I I I find her attractive physically and on the mental level, which elevates her so much more. So it's like, what if, for people to like actually because i there, I know there's people that do this where a friend says oh your boyfriend or your girlfriend is unattractive and they will actually break up with them for that sole reason and yep. that just yep i can't i can't get i can't think it's about that mind blowing i was at dinner with a bunch of girlfriends of mine this was probably like i don't know, i think this was actually like right around like the pandemic ending time and one of my friends looked at me and she was like even can i ask you a question and i was like yeah sure and she was like you're such a beautiful girl why do you date such ugly men and I literally was like, what? 
And she's like, no offense, but like, as long as I know, and we were friends for like years. And she's like, no offense, but like, you only date ugly guys. And I'm like, well, we get along. So like, why does it matter? And she's like, I mean, as long as you're happy, like, that's totally fine. But like, I was just always curious. And I was like, <laughs> well, I was like, we get along. That's, that's all we buy. We get along. We have stuff to talk about. And that, that's what matters to me. So. Right. And yeah, it's just, it, it, it is crazy because, you know, people, I mean, like anything in life, people are always going to judge. So why not do what you want to do? Because oh, yeah, everyone is always going to judge you regardless of whatever you do. So like as hard as it is not to give a fuck, choose the fucks that you give better. Like don't not give a fuck, but like just choose where your caring is going more. What do you think about hookup culture? I think that hookup culture is ruining our generations because I think that it is ruining the perception that we have of love, that we have of trust, that we have of communication, relationships, healthy relationships. I just, I mean, if you, I'm not going to shame anyone. You want to go out and have sex with whoever you want, go for it. All the power to you. But if you are doing it from a place that is coming from like you filling a void or you trying to feel loved and better about yourself or you just wanting to use people to feel better about you, I don't agree with that. If you want to go out and have sex with whoever you want to have sex with and you are completely confident in yourself and you completely love yourself, then go for it. But I think that the toxic hookup culture of having rosters and talking to someone for a, a year and not committing and it's pointless and it's just ruining the idea of like actual committed relationships and it's ruining people's trust and perception for not only women but men as well because hookup culture I think it's hard for one person to not get attached in hookup culture and then they end up hurt or heartbroken and then it ruins their perception of relationships and then they have heartbreak and trauma and issues from something that could have been avoided if it had better communication or if it just you don't like someone you don't want to be with them I think that you figure that out within the first like couple times that you're hanging out with them and if you don't want to be with them don't string someone along just because you want a booty call yeah and it's it's such a it's such a potent thing that, that like most people are affected by it and you know oh, even yeah. in my even in my life like I I acknowledge that there's been times where it's like I've led someone on or I didn't do something that was right and stuff and it's it's like again it's it's very important to like be aware that like you make mistakes and that you know you can change things and stuff like that because I mean especially something with hookup culture is like I think we're adopting the thing of like this is the new norm and in terms of like in terms of relationships so like there are no more relationships I just want to hook up with people yeah. and I'm never looking for anything which is so scary to me because it's like if all you want to do is just have meaningless sex you're trying to fill a void and you're running away from something and like for me as well I see sex as something that maybe it's because I'm spiritual that it is an exchange of energies and it's, it's sacred and you're exchanging there you're exchanging trauma you're exchanging souls like all of that stuff like there's something that talks about in spirituality that every time you have sex with someone you are taking on their energy and not only are you taking on their energy you're taking on the energy of every single person that they have been with as well and it's said that the energy stays with you for like seven years or something like that and like but like the same thing is like when you're sleeping with someone you're sleeping with every single person that they've slept with as well and so when you're in when you're sleeping with someone that's in a very dark place that's filled with hatred and turmoil that energy is getting put into you and that to me i'm like i'm good on that front that like i don't know i just think that sex is something as i like, don't don't get me wrong when i was younger i have had my hookups and all of those things but i'm at a point in my life where i'm just like hookup culture to me is sad and it is something that if it is coming from a place where you both of you have mutual understand, you're choosing to hook up someone and you both have mutual understanding that we're both in a healthy place. We're both like in a healthy mindset. We both love ourselves, but 
I just want something physical with you and nothing else, but it's coming from a good place. Okay. If that works for you. But most of the time it's not that most of the time it's people just trying to fill their void and then destroying people's trust and destroying people's safety and perceptions of love. And I don't think that yeah. that's fair. Right. Uh, it's, it's definitely, it's, it's something that has to, well, I don't want to say change. It's not going to change, but you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. So something, another thing you've talked about on your page that I fully agree with is the concept of you coming first in your relationship, you know, your goals, your desires, where you want to be in life, like that comes before the other person. And that's not to say you're in a relationship with someone, but you're neglecting them and what they want. So that's not what it's saying. It's, you know, I have to be good before. It's just like, it's like, I have to be good before I even get into a relationship because, Mm -hmm. you know, like we were talking about before with the baggage and, um, you know, hopping from relationship to relationship. If you don't take the time to figure out you before you get into a relationship, you're taking all those issues and just bringing it with you. Yep. I think that if you don't prioritize yourself first, you can lose yourself in the relationship. Because if you don't know firmly who you are before you get into a relationship, you don't have your own hobbies, your own friends, your own life, your own passions that you want to pursue, it's easier to get into a relationship with someone and let this other person consume you and make your entire life about them. You cut off your friends. You stop doing the things that you love. You stop pursuing things that you're passionate about. And then when people do do that, if the relationship ends, who are you then? You're lost. And I don't think anyone is ever worth losing yourself for. And being in the time that we're in now where we have our phones all the time where we can text someone 24 seven, call someone 24 seven, FaceTime, Snapchat, everything all the time. It creates this exhaustion of being with people that it makes the relationship run its course before it's supposed to. And that when you don't prioritize yourself first, you obsess over the other people and you kind of like force so much time together because you are losing yourself in them that what could have been a really great incredible relationship then comes to a halt because you have been with this person seven days a week all day every day and you have completely stopped been neglecting who you are Mm. because it's yeah like you just said if you lose yourself in someone else then you after you're done with the relationship, it's like, what are you going to do? You're going to grieve that person and not have any more hobbies. You're not going to have any more outlets, any more friends to go to. Yeah. It's it's just, it's just not worth it to let everything go and let yourself go. No, not at all. And I think that it's a super unattractive thing too. Like when I'm talking to a guy and like he starts like losing himself and stops doing certain things for him, I start losing interest because I'm like, why are you not doing these things for yourself? Like if I'm, t- I was talking to a guy once that he would work, work out all the time, do like he was very into fitness before we started talking and then we started hanging out. He would be like, oh, like I'm not coming to the gym today. Do you want to hang out? And I was like, no, go to the gym. And he just didn't understand where I was coming from with that. And I'm like, you're willing to give up things that you love to spend time with me. And I'm not asking you to do that. And no one that you're with should ever ask you to give up the things that you love and that you enjoy in order to be with them because you shouldn't have to change who you are in order to be with someone. You should be who you are and then they should be who they are. And then you come together and be who you are together and bring those separate things together. Because if you aren't separate and have your own separate lives, what are you going to talk about with each other? If you're with each other all day, every day, 24 seven, your entire life is this person. What is there to talk about? Like actually, because if I'm spending all of my time with you and all of my energy on you and I'm not doing anything, I can't talk to you about the things that are going on with my friends, my family, my hobbies. If I tried something new, I can't share those experiences with you because I don't have them anymore. And I think when you when it gets to that point, people will inevitably, whether it happens in the first week or month or year, people will start to become resentful of each other. Because it's yes. like they're spending so much time with each other and 
not and, and people will start like blaming their partner for taking the time away from them and their hobbies but really you're doing that to yourself mm -hmm. there's a big difference between you willingly giving up certain parts of you for your partner when they never asked you to and your partner asking you to do those things and you hit the nail on the head when you just said that people confuse those two so often that just because you decided to give up who you were for your partner does not mean that they asked you to. It's, I think it's, it's definitely something that happens way too often nowadays also. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's just yet another thing that, you know, we just, people just have to acknowledge that, you know, sometimes that things just happen like that. And you, you have to realize your own faults and where you're thinking about things wrong and what you can change. Yes. I, and, read a book in my early 20s called Single on Purpose. And it's by John Kim, I think is the author's name. He's a psychologist, I believe. Um, but it's all about, it's not about like being single. It's about prioritizing yourself and your own relationships and who you are outside of any other relationship. And it was the best book. I've reread it multiple times. It is the best book about relationships that I think is out there because it teaches you that the relationship with yourself should always come first because if not then you are going to lose yourself every time so i recommend that to anyone i'll have to check that out i, I completely agree with that too because i mean it just goes along with everything we were just saying you, you don't prioritize prioritize yourself you're gonna lose yourself in that relationship you're gonna you're gonna go down a spiral and then after it's over when it will inevitably be over because you're not in control of yourself um it's 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 gonna be it's gonna be very ugly and it's gonna take you a long time to be able to rebuild the habits and rebuild yourself back up and i think even when people realize that they have to make sure that then it doesn't happen again with the next person they get into a relationship again and they go through the cycle over and over again yeah if it happens once because i think that we have all experienced the relationship that we lose ourselves in we've all been there if it happens once if it happens twice we're human we make mistakes but then learning from those relationships and not continuing the cycle and choosing to break the cycle because you know when you leave a relationship and you don't know who you are anymore without this person. And like you just said, it's the hardest freaking thing ever to rebuild who you are after you lost them for someone else. Yeah. And well, what do you think? What do you think about developing like emotional maturity? I think developing emotional maturity is one of the hardest things to do because it takes a lot of accountability and a lot of people don't want to be accountable for things that they've done and emotional maturity comes into play of being able to be aware of your own faults your own failures taking responsibility and accountability for those own failures and then also being able to listen so like say if someone hurts you or you hurt someone this is the best way that i understand emotional maturity you hurt someone and you sit down with this person and they explain to you every which way that you hurt them and you sit there and you just listen you don't argue you don't do a back and forth you don't tell them that they're wrong you listen and then when they are done whatever the reasons are you genuinely are able to look at them and be like I am sorry for the role that I played in that. And I wasn't aware at the time that I was playing that role or whatever, but being able to take accountability for yourself, but also take, like listen to other people and the accountability that you have had with them and the impact that you have had on them and like genuinely being able to look at all these aspects of your life and see yourself for who you really are and see the actions that you have done for what they really are and be able to process them and move forward in whatever ways are right in that area. And that's a really hard thing for people to do. And being emotionally mature is understanding yourself and also understanding that everyone else has differences from you. And that's okay. Yeah. And, and people, and, and realizing, you know, people have, it's such an interesting concept that people have different viewpoints of you. So I view myself a certain way. You view me as a different way that I view myself. All my every single one of my friends and my family members views me in some different way. 
So mm-hmm. it's like, it's it's a very it's such an interesting concept to me because it's like I'm a different person. Like I don't seem like I'm a different person when I act around them, but like mm-hmm. they view me as a basically a different person. Yes, every single person that you have in your life, you are a different person to them, and we don't get to decide who those people are. What and like the person that you interact with at Starbucks has a perception of you, but you aren't necessarily responsible for that perception either because a lot of those perceptions that people have of us are created by their own mindset and their own bias and their own perceptions. So how others perceive us can be a perception of themselves too, which I think is also like kind of a mind fuck. Yeah. Because pe- like people, I don't know, let's say it's like a certain insecurity and then they'll, you'll act a certain way and then that'll just make them kind of their own mind kind of twist what you meant it as or whatever it is. And it's just you, that's, that just comes to you believing a situation happened a certain way and them genuinely believing it happened a different way. And then you guys clashing over that because it's like, there's, there's no understanding because we believe it to, we both believe it to have happened a completely different way. I think that there's, I always say this, there's three sides to every story. Yours, theirs, and the truth. Because how you viewed something, how they viewed something, your own perceptions are altering that. And then what, actually happened is different from both of those because the perceptions are taken out of it and the beliefs and projections are taken out of it too so being able which is like no one's ever really going to be able to like view things from the actual actual truth because we all have biases we all have perceptions we all have our own beliefs but remembering when there are things going on that if you are arguing with someone or you're different from someone in a way how they have perceived a, a situation it's completely different from how you have perceived a situation and understanding and accepting and respecting those differences, I think is a big, big foundation for emotional maturity is respect that how you are and how someone else is, is not the same. And that's okay. And being able to understand that this person is this way and I am this way, but it doesn't make either bad people in a sense. Right. It's just some people just are different in whatever certain aspect it is and, you know, Mm -hmm. coming to terms with that. Yeah. So something uh, I saw you talk about in one video, which is something that you never really hear uh, a girl talk about on social media, at least from what I've seen, is, you know, men's mental health. You made a point in the video of, you know, like to check up on and it's not just men because, you know, of course, women apply to and like, you know, checking on the people that you know, seem like they're strong all the time, you know, inside, they might not necessarily be like that because, you know, something and I, I, I don't, I want to include, you know, women in this conversation because I don't want to neglect um, yeah. them, but, you know, you know, men's mental health. And I think, I think especially with social media, it's like where men are kind of looked at in a way of, well, there's, there's many different social, um, social standards and social biases and certain viewpoints that like men have about women and women have about men and you know it's like one of them of of, you know like the men aspect is like you always have to be you always have to be strong all the time you can't show emotion and stuff like that and i think that's one of those things that's kind of very hurt it's it's it takes a toll on a lot of people and a lot of men because it's like you know i i used to have this perception of in my first relationship, I never really opened up to her, right? Because I had this belief of if I open up to her, if I tell her about my problems, I'm weak. I'm not a man. Yeah. It's not. It's not masculine. But then over time, I met. I met. I ended up meeting someone else, and I really connected with that person. And she showed me that like I can actually open up to a girl and not be judged for it, and like yeah. she can help me. Yeah, and by no means is this stating at all that women don't struggle with mental health too and i want you to know that i understand where that's where you're coming from like this is by no means women struggle with their mental health too just like men struggle with their mental health but i think that women's mental health is more socially acceptable to talk about and it's more socially acceptable for women to be vulnerable where it is than men because as women we are raised to with our friends to be able to cry and have those conversations and show our emotions and 
vent and be angry and be upset without judgment because women are quote unquote more emotional than men. Whereas men are raised that, like you just said, you have to be strong all the time. If you show an emotion, you're weak. And even in friend groups with men, if you talk to your boys about, I'm hurting right now. I, I'm really struggling right now. I, I, I don't know what to do. I'm really struggling right now. Then there's that shame from men sometimes because they're like, well, be a man. Men don't cry. Men don't talk about their feelings. And that has, I think that's detrimental to men's mental health in that there is an epidemic in this world going on right now with mental health and specifically men's mental health because it isn't talked about enough and there isn't a light shed on it enough that just because a man is a man does not mean that he's not allowed to have emotions and does not mean that he's not allowed to have feelings and you having feelings and you having emotions does not make you weak. I think that there is eternal strength and vulnerability and being able to create a space for men in your life that like specifically as a woman being being able to create space for men in my life that they feel as though they are safe with me and that I have my guy friends that will reach out to me that like when they're down and out they're like e I need you like I, I feel like I don't have anyone like I, I need to talk to you and being able to create that space for them where they feel like I'm not going to judge them in that they can just be them is something that I think men need more of because just because someone appears strong doesn't mean that they're not struggling. And I think that it's really hard for women to admit that sometimes because from what I got from that post when I made it, I got a lot of comments that were like, fuck men they're fine they did so much trauma to me they have done so many awful things to me and women are holding on to a lot of resentment and anger from men which i'm not gonna sit here and say that it's easy to overcome i have trauma from men in my life but that doesn't mean that there's not good men out there and yes there are shitty men out there just like there are shitty women out there but just because a certain small minority of the population sucks does not mean that the rest should struggle in order to like be there. And I I don't know, like I just, I hope that one day we live in a world where men are raised to know that there is strength and vulnerability in being able to talk about your feelings could save lives because the suicide rate for men is terrifying. And it shouldn't be that way. And as a society, we have created that. And that's very sad. Right. And it's just, I, 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 re I, I really dislike the whole, it's it's like nowadays, it's like a gender war. It's like so it many is. of the men hate the women and so many mm -hmm. of the women hate the men. And it's just, there's no, there's no meeting in the middle of like, we fuck up in this and you guys fuck up in this. It's, I hate you. And it's, yeah. just, it's just, it's just endless. Yeah, it's like, just like I said, there are shitty women out there. There are shitty men out there. Like, it's it's how it works. But you shouldn't blame an entire gender for, like, a couple of people. And that's where, like, we, we live in a world that's already so divided, not only by gender, but so many other things that, like, why create more of a divide? Like, whenever, like... I've noticed this a lot when I look at people's like social media comments that like men's men, male creators, a lot of their hate comments are from women and female creators, their hate comments are from men. And it's like, why? Like, why do you have this like burning hatred so much for another gender? And I understand that like a woman did you wrong or a man did you wrong or hurt you or did a horrible thing to you. But that's that one person. Why are you attacking an entire gender for something one person did? Or like, I look at it too, that like when I told people to check in on like their male friends and family and all that stuff, people were like, I don't have men in my life to check up on. You don't have a dad, a brother, an aunt, an uncle, a cousin, a male friend that you care about and that you love. I doubt that. I don't know. It's it's sad. And I wish men got more credit for being vulnerable because they deserve it. 
it doesn't mean that women deserve it any less. It just means that he, we're all human beings and we all deserve to be able to express our emotions when we need to. Right. And it's unfortunately as a whole in society, I really, I really don't think because of all the division in that aspect and everything else, I, I don't think it's going to change anytime soon because I mean, especially, uh, on the YouTube side of things, you know, there's a lot of, you know, men's mental health or men's self-improvement channels, you know, mm -hmm. I, um, and I'd say like in an aspect, my channel does that, um, not, not just, uh, but like most of the podcasts apply to men and women, but some stuff yeah. is geared more towards men. Exactly. Um, but you know, the point, um, I want to say is, you know, th there's a lot of what, what they call the red pill community on online, online nowadays. And I don't know if you know what that term means or not. Um, I've heard about it, but I don't actually know what it means. So it's kind of like, you know, you, you ever watch the matrix of like the red pill and the blue pill? So it's kind of like the red pill is your masculine, your alpha, your high status, and blue is like your beta. You can't get girls. You're weak, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. And so, the the red pill side of things nowadays has evolved not into tr building better habits as a man and you know being able to be better in relationships. It's it's mainly about how can you optimize getting as many girls as possible. How can you and and most of it is you know like i don't mo i don't like women for who they are i just want to you know use them and stuff like that yeah. and it's 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 bad because it's like these guys have so many subscribers and so many men in the comments that i look at of like yeah like this and that and that and it's just so many like when cuz it happened to me when i when i was like I don't know, 13 or whatever it was. And I first like saw YouTube channels like that. I got sick to, sucked into it and, and into That's thinking amazing. like, oh yeah, like a lot of girls, yeah, they must be like this, whatever. And then eventually, you know, when I had relationships in my own life, I realized, okay, not all women are like this. But, yeah. you know, it's it's leading so many men to believe that all women are bad and all this and that. And so they're going to go, if they don't realize it like I did, they're going to go throughout the rest of their teenage years, the 20s, the rest of their life, believing this bullshit about how women all women are and it's just it, they're never going to get anywhere in relationships or anywhere in life no it's sad that like we live in a world where i feel like when i think about that i think of like andrew tate and like everything and look where andrew tate ended up like but the toxic masculinity which i think is a very real thing that there are these men out there and i think that a lot of toxic masculinity and this is going to trigger some men comes from a place of insecurity that when you are bashing women or degrading women in a way because you feel entitled to them it's because you are insecure in some way and you have something in yourself that you need to work on and but that's like women same can go for women if women are bashing men in some way they have something that they need to work on and there is going to be no growth in creating people that creates more of a divide in the world and you're right it's not going to change anytime soon and honestly it's probably going to get worse because of everything going on in the world right now with especially in america with women's rights being up for debate in the government and women's rights being up to essentially men right now in congress and men thinking that they have a say in that and men thinking that with the channels that you're describing that they have an entitlement to women and no one's entitled to anyone we're all human beings we all have autonomy and free will and choice and men that are like that it's like i feel like when i look at a man like that i'm like yeah you're a damaged child and that's just sad to me yeah. that's going to hear some men and i know that but So, I mean, what I, I wanted to ask you, so I don't really ask that many girls uh, this question, but what do you think, what do you think men can do to understand women better? Because there's always like stuff women do that men don't just seem to not understand and stuff men do that women just don't seem to understand. So what, what do you think is something we can do better? We are all complex creatures that can't understand each other because we aren't each other. But I think something that, is misunderstood from a men's standpoint about women is that as a woman being with someone or opening up to someone 
the biggest foundation of that is like safety and trust. And that can go for not just physically safe, spiritually safe, mentally safe, emotionally safe, sexually safe. Like if a woman can be with you, not only physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually feel like she can go to you and explain things to you and she's going to feel safe. Like there aren't repercussions and there aren't, and you're going to listen. I think that's the biggest thing that men misunderstand. There's all these hacks out there of like how to get a woman, how to do this, how to do that. Have a woman feel safe with you. Allow her to be seen with you. Like you were just talking about the red and the blue pill, the masculine and the feminine. A lot of women nowadays are in their masculine energy because they're very hyper independent and they're doing whatever it is that forced them to be in their hyper independence and their masculine energy and being with a man that allows them to break down their walls and be more in their feminine because they feel safe enough with them that they know that they can show all aspects of themselves in that they're going to be accepted and that they're going to be seen and that there aren't going to be repercussions for it or that they're not going to judge them. And I think that the same could go for vice versa, but obviously I'm not a man, so I don't understand. So I can't speak on that, but from a woman's perspective, I think safety is the biggest thing that men misunderstand about women. I think that's a good one. So you were, this is change sifting the conversation topic a little bit, but I remember seeing a video about you were talking about how you had a conversation with your friend about dreams, you know, sleeping and all mm-hmm. the different, the, like the kind of different realities and realms and stuff like that, because mm-hmm. that that's a conversation I enjoy having with people because yeah. it goes, it goes very in depth and very complex because, you know, I've had, you know, I can't even pinpoint all the different types of dreams I have because there's, you know, there's people that say, you know, certain dreams have meaning. So what I've tried to do is sometimes I have a certain dream and I wake up and I, I think, hmm, where in my life could this relate to whatever, right? So there's that aspect. I've also had, you know, I've had lucid dreams where it's like literally everything feels like complete reality. But yeah. in the back of my mind, I know it's not real, but it yeah. feels completely real and, and mm-hmm. all my senses are completely real, which, you know, a phenomenon like that is just, it's like, what what's going on there? Like, is that like another, is that just in my head or is that in like an mm-hmm. actual other universe, other realm where it's like, mm-hmm. I have the power to do whatever like, for example, in one of my dreams, I wanted my lucid dreams, I wanted to fly, right? Mm-hmm. And this, I think, applies very much in reality is you need to, if you want to do something, you need to fully believe that you can do it. Yes. So my dream, when since it was a lucid dream, you can basically do whatever you want. I wanted to fly. Mm-hmm. I started running. I jumped like twice and I wasn't able to do it. And then I, 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 sit, I sat there and I, I, I said to myself, if I want to fly right now, I have to genuinely believe that when I jump, I'm going to be able to fly. Yeah. And then I took a few seconds and I'm like, I, I genuinely believed it. I went and I was literally able to fly, flying mm-hmm. throughout the sky and whatever, stuff like that. But what would just, I, I just talked a lot. What, what do you, what do you think about dreams and all this type of stuff? No, I think that because there are so many different types of dreams out there, I fully believe that there are certain dreams that we have that are alternate realities in that there we're having the dream to show us what our alternate reality could be or what an alternate reality version of us is doing. I also think that there are dreams when if you're dreaming about a person, and I want to specify this by being like someone that you know, someone that you know in your personal life, if you are dreaming about someone a lot or someone that like you have had in your life prior, it's either like they're thinking about you or they're missing you. And I say that by saying people you know because if you're dreaming about a celebrity all the time and they don't they've never met you they're not they don't they're not thinking about you they have no idea who you are but I think that our dreams are insights and these aren't all dreams because there are dreams where it's like you're like my friend literally had a dream the other day that she was Mrs. Incredible that did does that have any meaning to any alternate reality no I don't think so because I don't think she's Mrs. Incredible in another reality but I think that our dreams can give us insights to other versions of us and other parts of us and also into our own lives now that I think that if you're dreaming something that could actually happen in this plane, it could be giving you an insight as to like, if you choose a certain path, this could be your future. I'm not saying that our dreams tell the future, but I think that it could. Yeah. I, there's, there's somebody, you know, you can never, 
can never know, I guess. It, it all depends what you believe, because you can never... Things are real 100% of the time. But I heard someone on, you know, Joe Rogan's podcast one time talk about... Um, he took... Um, he took a certain type of mushroom or something, a psychedelic, and he he had very vivid dreams. And then those dreams actually predicted the future. And what happened in that experience happened in reality. And to something like that, it's what the fuck? Mm-hmm. If that if that actually happened? No. Our minds are incredibly powerful. And we often don't give them enough credit that they deserve. Because we can literally rewire new neural pathways in our brain. If you know who Joe Dispenza is, which I'm sure you do, he talks about it all the time. There are other people that talk about it all the time. If we can rewire new neural pathways and if we can quantum leap into other dimensions, why can't our dreams tell the future? If you're in sync with your mind enough, I I think that it takes specific people to be very in tuned with themselves and in tuned with their minds to understand this and to like take it into account that it's like oh maybe my dreams do mean something but i think that our dreams could definitely tell the future and i didn't think that our dreams do give us glimpses into alternate realities and alternate versions of us because when you're sleeping it could be that that alternate version of you is awake and that's why you're entering that alternate reality because it's that reality's time to be awake and then when you're living in this plane that alternate reality of you is sleeping and this is that version's dream you know what i mean like my alternate self could be having this dream right now while she's sleeping and then wake up and be like wow that was weird but it's a different version of her living a different living on a different plane right and it's it's such an interesting thing to think about that it's kind of like the potential for kind of us and our like perception of ourselves to be in like a different place and a different reality Mm -hmm. and you know i mean that's i mean people have you know i've thought about the concept of you know people talk about deja vu and like if you have a moment where you know it seems like this happened before you know maybe it did happen in another another in another reality yeah no i wholeheartedly believe that that like when you walk into somewhere so if it's like oh i've been here before Maybe you have, because who's to say that you haven't in like, whether it's on an alternate reality or a past life version of you, it's hard to differentiate, but we'll never know. But I think that it's the infinite possibilities. And like, even if what we're saying is complete and utter bullshit, I think believing in the possibility is just something that is amazing in itself that to have an open mind enough to be able to have discussions like this and to listen to people talk about how they're on psychedelics and dreaming about the future and all of those things. I think that that plays a huge role in the, in like our dreams as well as being able to just have an open mind and an open perception, because if you don't, where could it lead you? Yeah. I mean, you know, listen, something I think we've lost in today in society is, you know, being able to listen to, to people and people at different, rea- uh, different viewpoints on reality and everything that you may not have ever thought about before. And instead of, you know, just turning your mind off when someone speaks about something different, and it's not the way to go. I mean, you know, it's cause you're, you're always going to learn someone, something whenever you listen to some, someone that's talking about something different or something you're not knowledgeable about. Like, for example, uh, I did a podcast with my buddy Truman. I think it was the last one I posted and, He's done a lot of, um, so the CIA has declassified a lot of documents about experiments they've done and stuff like that. And that stuff is openly to the public. Yeah. Yet, yet if he talks about it, people in the comments will still say, you're a conspiracy theorist, this and that. But the CIA has literally come out and told you all of the fucked up things they're talking about. But since we have this, everyone has this view of the way reality is and the way the government mm-hmm. works, people refuse to believe certain things, even though it's actually happening. Yes. No, it's so crazy how close-minded society is that it's like we our our planet was once roamed by dinosaurs like li- like literally our planet was once was once roamed by dinosaurs and we have evolved from chimpanzees and all these things and it's so hard for you to believe all of these other things like look at everything that is so concrete in front of us that it, that the way that it has even come to be is like oh is a mind fuck in itself and people are refusing to open their mind up to other possibilities. 
we live in such a closed-minded world where it's so simple to jump down people's throats for having different beliefs than you. But it's like, why? Because those beliefs, what, threaten your perception of reality? It's crazy. It really is. Eden, I appreciate you coming on again. Yes. No, this was fun. I really enjoyed this conversation. Oh, me as well. So um, I'll link your stuff in the description once again. Okay. And uh, we'll catch you at the next one. Yes. Bye, guys.